In this video, I'll go over setting up Synology Drive Server, which is Synology's own private cloud solution. I'll also go over setting up Synology Drive clients as well. Synology Drive Server can be set up in several ways, but for this tutorial, I'll provide you with a simple setup that you can use to get your own private cloud up and running quickly. Before getting into the Synology Drive Server setup, I'd like to create a user that isn't an administrator that I'll be using later in the video. To do this, I'll bring up Control Panel here in DSM, select User and Group, click Create, and run through the User Creation Wizard, selecting the default options in the remainder of the Wizard Setup windows. Next, I'll install Synology Drive Server by going to the Package Center and search for and install the Synology Drive Server package. There are a few dependencies that need to be installed, which this screen displays. I'll click Yes to continue. After a few minutes, Synology Drive Server should be installed and a notification pop-up should indicate that the installation was successful as well. Now I'll head into the main menu and launch the Synology Drive Admin Console. I get this message window regarding security enhancements and the need to refresh the web page. I'll click Yes to continue. I'll again launch the Synology Drive Admin Console, and being that this is the first time I'm starting up the package, I get this welcome window providing information on the Synology Drive suite. I'll click through the various windows and proceed to the Synology Drive Admin Console. Next, I'll enable the My Drive Team folder, which is a Synology Drive folder that is made available to each individual user within their respective home directories. I'll make sure My Drive is selected, then click Enable. At this point, a window is displayed that allows me to go directly to the location to enable the user home service, so I'll click Yes to proceed. I'll scroll down to the bottom of this window, enable the user home service, as well as enable the recycle bin, and click Apply. I'll close the control panel window and click OK on this versioning window, accepting the 8 versions that Synology defaults to. I'll also click OK on this window, warning me about various team folder scenarios. The next thing I'd like to do is create a team folder that can be assigned to multiple users, unlike the MyDrive folder that was just enabled. To do this, I'll click on the Folders link here to bring up the Shared Folder control panel. I'll click Create to start up the Shared Folder Creation Wizard name the folder videos, and click through the remaining windows, enabling the data checksum for advanced data integrity box, which is available in my setup, to take advantage of this feature, which the BTRFS file system provides, and assign read-write permissions to the user account that was created earlier. I'll click Apply to finalize the setup. Next, I'll close the control panel, refresh the team folder window, and now we see that the videos team folder is available, which I'll enable. I'll again take the default versioning options by clicking OK and OK once again on this warning window. With the team folders all set up, we now need to enable remote access to connect to the Synology Drive server, and for the purpose of this video, I'll be using Quick Connect. To set up Quick Connect, I'll go to Control Panel, External Access, and Quick Connect. I'll select the Enable Quick Connect box, sign into my Synology account, enter in a Quick Connect ID I'd like to use, and click Apply. To learn more about Quick Connect, check out the video I created specifically on Quick Connect, which I'll link to in the description below. Next, I'd like to create an alias to easily access Synology Drive, so I'll go to Login Portal, Applications, select Synology Drive, and click Edit. In the Alias box, I'll enter in Drive for the alias I'd like to use and click Save. Now, we should be able to access the Synology Drive server, and I'll do so first by using a web browser. 
I'll first get the Quick Connect web browser link from the external access control panel. Then in a private browser window, I'll paste in the link and append drive to the end of the address to take advantage of the alias we just set up to go directly to Synology Drive. Looks like the address and alias are both working as expected, and I'm able to log into the Synology Drive web client as well. We can also see that the My Drive folder and the Videos team folder are both accessible. I'll copy a few files into each folder to confirm that both are working properly, and it looks like everything is working fine. Next, I'd like to set up the Synology Drive client on my MacBook, and I can do that by downloading the client software from the Synology Download Center, which I'll link to in the description below, or by clicking on the Get Synology Drive Apps Now link here in the corner of the web client, which is what I'll be doing. I'll select for PC and download the Synology Drive client for macOS and install the application, which I've already done. After launching the Synology Drive client, I get this window and I'll click Start Now to start setting things up. On this Connect to your Synology NAS window, I'll enter in my Quick Connect ID, username and password, and leave the Enable SSL Data Transmission Encryption option enabled, then click Next. In this setup, I'd like to create a sync task which will sync files between my MacBook and the Synology Drive server in real time, so I'll make sure that the option is selected and click Next. For the folder I'd like to sync, I'll be using my personal drive folder in my home directory, which is what is set by default, so I'll leave it as is. For the folder location on my MacBook, I'd like to create a folder under Documents, so I'll navigate to that location, create a folder, which I'll rename to something more meaningful to me, uncheck the Create an Empty Synology Drive folder so it uses the folder that I just created without creating another subfolder, and click OK, and then Done to complete the setup. I'll close this window, and now we can see that the two-way sync has been set up properly. I can click on this link to view the newly created sync folder and files within it. To make sure that everything is working properly, I'll copy a file into the folder, then I'll bring up the Synology Drive web client, and we can see that the file I just copied synced to the My Drive folder on my Synology NAS as expected. In this final section of the video, I'd like to offer you a use case in how I use Synology Drive, which hopefully helps you in deciding how to implement it in your environment. What I normally like to do is set up the Synology Drive client with two-way syncing on devices where I need to work on a file on multiple devices. For example, I may have a document that I create on my Windows 10 laptop because the application is only available in Windows, but I generally do most of my communicating from a MacBook, so I'd like to have that document synced for easy access when I do need to email it out to someone. For the Synology Drive web client, I tend to use it for everything else, and a perfect example are for my YouTube videos. Videos are generally larger files, and I don't need two-way syncing setup on really any of my devices, but I'd like to have easy access to the video files if I do need them, and the web client works perfectly for that. I can log in, download a video file as needed, and not take up unnecessary space on my devices. I hope this video on Synology Drive Server and its various clients helps you in setting up your own private cloud solution in your environment, and if it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you have questions on specific topics that I didn't cover in this video, leave a comment down below. Lastly, I'd be grateful if you would consider subscribing to this channel, and if you have the means, support my work by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.